forgiveness, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Knows what is he doing? He, David realizes what he's done, and and you know, and he, what does he want? He's wanting restoration. He wants, to, you know, I don't know of anyone who probably had a greater relationship. You know, he fought the giant, and you know, and he killed the lion and the bear, and he trusted God, and he, you know, as a, as a shepherd, he understood it as much as anyone, and and yet here he he's pleading because something in that relationship. Sometimes in our walk, we forget about God. And, and how important he is to us. The, the shepherd, you know, the shepherd watches the sheep. But David, he said, I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is ever before me. Against you and only you have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. He says that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And he says, purge me with his thought, verse 7, and wash me that I might be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy of gladness. You know, David was sad over all this. I think that's what made him different than Saul. You know, Saul was sad, and and it says he repented that he what the things he had done. But you know, David, you know, his heart was broken because of the sins. And then he he says, "Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me." You see, it, he's wanting back. And you know, the beautiful thing about God is when we get in that shape. He restores my soul. David knew that. And David was brought back into fellowship. David was a man after God's own heart. God said that in his writings. And here he says, He restoreth my soul. And, you know, that's, he says, He leads me in paths of righteousness. You know, as we follow God, acknowledge Him, and, you know, and uh, He says, Acknowledge Him in all His ways, and He will direct your steps. What is he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake? And he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And you think about it, the shadow, the and I don't think this is just at death, but any dark times in our lives, any any hardships, and Lord knows we all have those. We have times of death in our family. We have times when there's the money's tied. We have times when our society is having all kinds of problems and it's affecting every one of us. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. If I'm walking that valley of the shadow, guess what? He says, I will fear no evil. Why can we do that? Can we walk the valley of the shadow of death in this time? And a lot of people are dying because of these the diseases and these problems. And, and you know, and it's been going on. Now. This flu has killed a lot of people. A lot, all kind of different things have, have killed people. And, and it's going to continue to do so till the Lord comes again. But he said, I will fear no evil. Why? How could David say that? He said, for thou art with me. You see, the shepherd was watching over the sheep. He, he made sure, you know, they, that there is a place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death, and there, there's a place where she, sheep, shepherds had to take their sheep sometime. And, and, you know, it was a very scary place, and there was drop-offs. And, and sometimes the sheep would, would fall off the side of the cliff and maybe be hanging on a ledge below. They walked the Valley of the Shadow of Death, he said, I'll fear no evil. The sheep didn't worry about it. You know, most of the time he, was, he just know, knew that the shepherd was going to take care of him. And, and he watched after him. And, and he, but he says, as, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they cover me. You know, the shepherd, he had this rod and staff. It was for protection. You know, David knew that better than anybody. He killed a lion and a bear. I don't know if he did it with his bare hands or he used his rod and staff, but sometimes these sheep would fall and they'd take that, that staff and they'd reach down and it had a little hook on it. It was a long, about a, a six or eight foot long stick and it had a hook on the end of it. And if they fell down where they couldn't get up, the shepherd would get down and he would reach down and he would, he would lift that sheep up out of the, off the ledge and bring him back under his protection. Because he needed that, and you know, sometimes we, we need you know, we don't know what the Lord's doing for us. You know, we acknowledge Him in all our ways, and He will direct us our paths. And here He says, you know, if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, He said He would fear no evil, because the Lord was with Him. And He said, Thy rod and Thy staff they comfort me. And then thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I, I was thinking about, this is an interesting part of this scripture when you think about it. Hey, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. These sheep would, they, there were certain kind of briars and things in the, where they would graze. And the shepherd would go ahead of them and he would get all these briars and stuff out. And so that when the sheep got there, when they were ready to graze, they, they wouldn't get these. Because some of them were really, really deadly. And he would take them and burn them. And, and then the sheep could just, they could, they could keep going. 
thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine lot. The Lord was taking care of them. He was watching after them. And you know what? He takes care of us. He's watching over us. He, he's helping us during these difficult times. He says, Thou anointest my head with oil. You know, when the sheep would come in the fold at night, you know, a lot of them, they'd graze and they got bumped their nose and different things against rocks and, and uh, you know, and they maybe skint places. And uh, what the, he would take this anointing oil and he would take and he would rub it on them. And, and he says, My cup runneth over. You know, they'd take a cup and, he, and they would get that drink of water. He'd make sure he had some cool water uh, in a pitcher that he had saved for this sp specific occasion. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's hope, folks. You know, hope, where's your hope today? You know, we, we see that really there's only one sure place to have hope. Our hope is in God. And I hope your hope is in Him today. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, you know, that David had hope. And, you know, it wasn't wishful thinking. You know, sometimes I think we think hope is wishful thinking. But he doesn't say that. He says, surely, surely, we know surely goodness and mercy. Surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then there's, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. <laughs> That's home, isn't it? Isn't that what we're looking we're, we're going home. You know, we, we live in this land, and, you know, all of God's people throughout time is living this. Abraham, it says, was a pilgrim, stranger. And, you know, you and I are the same today. We're on our way home. There's a better place waiting if you're ready to meet the Lord. If the Lord is your shepherd, uh, there was two men one day had asked to do a rendition of the 23rd Psalm, and the first young man got up and Anyway, he did this glorious presentation of the 23rd Psalm, and the people in the audience cheered. They, they thought it was so good. They, and then the next uh, older gentleman had his cane, and he walked up to the podium, and, and he did the 23rd Psalm. And there was silence over the audience. And the young man, realizing what the old man, old gentleman had done, he said, I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. And my challenge to you today is, do you know the shepherd? Are you a Christian? If you're not a Christian, you don't know the shepherd. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, willing to repent of your sins, make that good confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and go down into the waters of baptism, have your sins washed away by the blood of Jesus. I hope that you've done that, but if you haven't, we give you that opportunity to think about it, and if we can help you anyway, we want you to contact us, and we'll we'll help you take care of that, and then any other things that we might help with. But I, I hope you're here this day, and you're listening to this. I hope the Lord is your shepherd, as David. I hope you know the shepherd, not just the song. But anyway, as we stand and sing, I hope you'll think about your life and your relationship with God. Would you be free from the burden of sin? you are watching out there today and uh, as Larry mentioned we uh, we do plan to do a in-car service uh, next week for for Easter Sunday so 
remember that and we'll be getting announcements out to you for that and give you details on that so uh, give you an opportunity to uh, to worship in your car with no contact we will get to put our eyes on you and we're looking forward to that it's on 107.1. All right. We'll, we'll give you all that information. We'll be on 107.1, so uh, remember that. I think you've got to be close to us to hear it, so you, you will need to come to the parking lot to hear that. All right. Let me say uh, that I'm encouraged that we got some young folks here. that They got up early and, and came out to be with us so we could record that, and we're, we're encouraged by that. And uh, please come next week and, and be in your car so you can edify and encourage each and every one of us because we are missing you guys so bad. You still see your pictures out there in the pews, and we, we thank Andy and the efforts for that. We thank Andy for recording our services so that we can have this opportunity to watch it online. If there's nothing else, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for all that you do for us. We're, we're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to, to come to you and, and worship this morning. And Lord, as these, our members watch this online, Lord, we just, we just let, let them know that we miss them. And we're thinking about them. And we want to continue in prayer for those that are in need of our prayers at this time, those we have on our prayer list, each and every one of them. We, you know their needs, and we ask that you fill their needs and be with those that are ministering care to them. Lord, we just want everybody to know that we miss them, and we're praying for them each and every day. And if we have opportunity to do good, Lord, let us help seek those out, opportunities to do good to others. Forgive us when we fall short. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen.